One doesn't commonly associate the slogan, make love, not war, with the US military. Indeed, the United States military is feared and formidable precisely because it has proven so effective at conceptualizing clever and innovative ways to search, find, and destroy, often with the simple push of a button. However, in a departure from these hostile traditions in 1994, the Wright Laboratory, part of the US Air Force, produced a three-page proposal for a gay bomb. Documentation obtained by the Sunshine Project, an anti-biological weapons non-governmental organization, found that the Ohio-based Wright Lab requested a six-year, $7.5 million grant to create a variety of non-lethal weapons. The bluntly titled project, called Harassing Annoying and Bad Guy Identifying Chemicals, reads like a bawdy proposal penned by a Bond villain. Auric Goldfinger, perhaps. It proposed a bomb that contained a chemical that would cause enemy soldiers to become gay and to have their units break down because all of their soldiers became irresistibly attracted to one another. While the laboratory also came up with similarly questionable ideas, such as bad breath bombs, flatulence bombs, and bombs designed to attract swarms of stinging insects to enemy combatants, one has to admit that the gay bomb is certainly the most novel. The Pentagon maintains that the love affair with the gay bomb idea was brief. However, the Sunshine Project thinks the Pentagon doth protest too much, finding that they submitted the proposal to the highest scientific review body in the country for them to consider. Indeed, the proposal's information was submitted to the National Academy of Sciences in 2002. The Pentagon certainly admits giving the project consideration, releasing a statement affirming, the Department of Defense is committed to identifying, researching, and developing non-lethal weapons that will support our men and women in uniform. Nonetheless, the project never made it off the ground. But the question remains, how did they even come up with such an idea? Perhaps the best clue lies in the political climate at the time. When newly elected President Bill Clinton attempted to lift the ban on homosexuals in the military, there was a din of saber-rattling, pitchfork sharpening, and moral hand-wringing from the military brass. The general consensus among many leaders of the military was touted by the Department of Defense. Homosexuality is incompatible with military service. Also, they said that allowing gay people in the military would pose a security risk and disrupt the needed order for the military to be effective. The resulting Don't Ask, Don't Tell, later called Don't Ask, Don't Tell, Don't Pursue, Don't Harass compromise, which has since been struck down, was less than thrilling for the Pentagon at the time. In such a political climate, with rampant, unfounded paranoia about gay people distracting military discipline and morale, this project seems, notwithstanding its highly flawed premise, somewhat more understandable in terms of how they came up with the idea and why they believed it might be an effective weapon. As to the science behind this military farce, while various companies peddling scented sprays and rub-ons find it expedient to claim that their product contains human pheromones which have an aphrodisiac effect, lab testing has lagged by behind somewhat in actively confirming any of this. Admittedly, one section of the documents, entitled New Discoveries Needed, acknowledges that thus far no such chemicals have been found to exist. While the gay bomb project never became perhaps more than a pie-in-the-sky dream of the Wright Lab, it has gained a second lease of life through news media, popular culture, and even academia. The news of this proposed weapon of mass de-loving even spawned a musical, disappointingly entitled Gay Bomb the Musical. Why they chose this title, as opposed to, say, Brothers in Arms, Das Booty, or Saving Ryan's Privates, is a mystery that we're never going to be able to solve. For the attempt at making a gay bomb, the Wright Lab had the honor of winning the Ig Nobel Prize in 2007. As the prize is organized by the Annals of Improbable Research, it seems to be an excellent home for the project, though perhaps a step down from the National Academy of Sciences. Among other 2007 Ig Nobel Prize winners were Mayu Yamamoto in chemistry, awarded for extracting vanilla flavor from cow dung, and Dan Mayer and Brian Whitcomb in medicine, who were awarded the prize for researching the side effects of swallowing swords. The levity of the event seemed lost on the gay bomb creators, however, who kept a straight face about the whole matter. They declined to attend the award ceremony to accept the prize personally. And now for some bonus facts. Speaking of Ig Nobel Prizes, they have been given out annually since 1991. 
The prizes are presented to the winners by actual Nobel laureates. One person, Sir Andre Geim, has actually won an Ig Nobel Prize in 2000 and a real Nobel Prize in 2010. He won the Ig Nobel Prize for an experiment where he and another scientist successfully levitated a frog using magnets. His actual Nobel Prize was won for groundbreaking experiments regarding the two-dimensional material graphene. During the ceremony, each Ig Nobel Prize winner is given 60 seconds to explain their research. If they go over the time, a little girl, Miss Sweetie Poo, will walk up to them and yell, please stop, I'm bored, continually, until the speaker stops. It was also once traditional for audience members to throw paper airplanes at the stage while the ceremony was taking place, but this practice has unfortunately died out in recent years due to safety concerns. Some more awesome examples of work that resulted in people winning Ig Nobel Prizes includes economics, to a group that discovered that strippers earn more when they are at their peak fertility than otherwise. One can only imagine the significant time that they had to spend at strip clubs for science. Fluid dynamics, to researchers who calculated the pressure buildup inside penguins before they defecate. The report was titled, Pressures Produced When Penguins Poo, Calculations on Avian Defecation. Aviation, for the discovery that giving Viagra to hamsters helps them recover more quickly from jet lag. Biology, the discovery that a certain kind of beetle is attracted to and will try to mate with certain kinds of Australian beer bottles. The bottles these beetles are attracted to are brown with bobbly bits. Medicine, for the discovery that when people have a strong urge to pee, they consistently make better decisions with certain types of things and worse decisions with other kinds of things. Another one in medicine, for the development of replacement testicles for castrated dogs, which are available in a variety of sizes and levels of firmness. Peace to the mayor of Vilnius, Lithuania, for discovering that running over illegally parked luxury cars with tanks can effectively get rid of the problem of illegally parked cars. Medicine, again, prize given to Donald L. Unger for steadfastly only cracking the knuckles on one hand and not the other for 50 years in order to determine whether cracking knuckles can be a cause for arthritis in fingers. And finally, in astrophysics for a paper illustrating that black holes fulfill all the technical requirements to be the location of biblical hell, aka outer darkness. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Do not forget to subscribe. We got brand new videos every day of the week. For more from me, why not check out another channel I do called Biographics. It is linked to below. And as always, thank you for watching.